uh, it's just some we're going to talk about some basic equipment maintenance tips um, one thing that you always want to try to do which I know is difficult sometimes but you want to try and keep your equipment as clean as possible um, the first major rule uh, is to not use any kind of uh, chemical solvents or cleaners to 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 get your uh, equipment shiny or clean uh, I know that it'll it'll it's faster to do that but over time that will discolor uh, the 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 finish of the equipment especially with the 1200s they have uh, a grainy kind of matte finish on on the surface and using something like glass plus ammonia uh, anything like that will will take that away and it'll it'll make the surface dull and, and, and it'll appear worn out and uh, also you want to be careful not to be really using any liquids uh, in in a, in a large amount near the equipment because it is all electronic and what you might end up doing is spilling the the liquid into a component and as a result will just ruin the, the, the component after that happens and you can use any kind of uh, fabric that's you know as long as it's soft or, or paper towel or anything and to get into the fine the little fine areas of the turntable or the mixer you can use something like a q-tip and um, just kind of get into the little nooks and crannies if you will uh, crevices and such and just take away the big dust particles and all that you can also use some of that compressed air and spray it all spray all the dust out um, also what you want to do with the mixer is maybe take the knobs off and the faders and clean or in and around all the switches like this uh, dust is actually one of the uh, major uh, enemies as far as electronics is concerned dust and uh, oxidation is what causes that loud itchy scratchy sound in the when you turn knobs or move faders up and down and you get a very loud scratchy sound <clears throat> so keeping your mixer clean is definitely an important uh, thing to keep in mind and to consider as far as making sure that your equipment lasts as long as possible and try to stay away from using any kind of chemicals and solvents um, if you do have to use some sort of a liquid or anything to, to, to help take the dust or the color off of a piece of equipment apply it to that surface first and then proceed to wipe the, the component you would not want to spray or pour a liquid onto the component first and then wipe it with a, with a cloth um, the one exception I would I would suggest for using any kind of chemical or anything is rubbing alcohol and that would be to clean the contacts for the the contact points on the head shell and inside the tone arm here okay uh, over time these four contacts on the end of the head shell will build up corrosion and so also will the connection points inside the tone arm the one foolproof way to really clean that is to again take a regular q-tip like this and some basic rubbing alcohol isopropyl rubbing alcohol and carefully dip the q-tip inside squeeze out any excess and depending on how uh, how much buildup of corrosion there is oxidation on these contact points you can start to strip away and clean some of that corrosion like this and also carefully because the four connection points inside the tone arm are spring-loaded you want to gently twist the q-tip back and forth inside if you're experiencing any kind of connection issues between the head shell and the tone arm connection once in a while the left or right or both will signal will cut out and the first area you want to check for is how clean the contacts are in your tone arm and also on the end of your head shell so if 
if indeed your contacts are dirty and you clean them with the Q-tip and rubbing alcohol, once you take the Q-tip out, you, you'll probably see some of the dirt and grime and all that caught up onto the Q-tip and you'll know that you're doing something right. So after a couple seconds of that, you can connect your head shell back on. And you don't want to try to you don't want to tighten this too much or else you you'll risk stripping this this collar which tightens the head shell onto the toenail. And as far as other maintenance tips, always use uh, uh, like what we showed you before, always use a road case of some sort to uh, make sure that your equipment travels wherever it has to go safely. And there are cheaper uh, uh, models and cheaper versions of tour road cases. And the cheaper ones are, are fine for local or, uh, or light traveling. However, if you're going to take anything onto a plane or ship it cross country, and it's going, going to be out of your hands. Uh, there are regulation uh, tour cases and road cases that do cost a lot of money, but if you're really going to get into that, you should seriously consider that investment. Otherwise, you can get 50 to $100 cases for anything like a turntable or a mixer, and you should be fine for your local gigs back and forth from your house.